Hey, Dr. Lindsay and Wendy here. Uh, this is a little short video, one year follow up on a 50 ish year old frontal U case. And uh, this guy's maybe a year or two younger than me, but he's roughly my age. And he, uh, the good thing about him is he works with trees. So he completely understands all my video analogies to hair transplants being like moving trees around. And so this is a guy that's got the big thing he's got going against him is he's got fairly fine hairs, but he's got a huge color contrast. I mean, that is a white scalp, right? Yes. And he's still got a few more black hairs than maybe I got. And uh, but once he turns gray, he's going to look even look even better. But the big thing to overcome with him is it takes a lot of those thin hairs to, to, to that. cover that white scalp until he gets gray hair. So here's where we start. And we worked around that little tuft that he's got in, in the front. So we, we call these frontal use because the first time that we did one of these, this that I'm outlining uh, looked like a U to me. It probably should be called a Y, but uh, coming from the University of Virginia, uh, I thought that was a, a U. And so we trim those hairs down and work around that tuft, realizing, and there's a few uh, other videos we have of this, including one doctor that we did this on, where the tuft went away and we had to take care of it. Uh, we work around that tuft, and the advantage of that is you look pretty normal at a week. You don't, there's no telltale signs of a hair transplant after after a week on, on cases like this. So we trim him down, and then these are the hairs, the grafts put in. You get those things packed in there. Oh, yeah, they look good. And he had good hair, good thick grafts. Uh, and meaty root balls. And so then he walked in last week. He's uh, 14 months out and he looks good. His, uh, the only thing he's got going against him is that white scalp underneath the newly placed black hairs that we put up there. I guess he'll be looking forward for those gray hairs that matches nicely with them. Yeah, gray hair, it's like bottles of wine us men are, Wendy. You do better with age. <laughs> and so uh, he is probably going to do a second case where we start behind the first case and work towards and probably finish off his crown. And uh, uh, if you've seen my video called A Collection of Fine-Haired Guys, which all you fine-haired guys should watch, mm -hmm. uh, always we encourage people to take a few hundred singles of a second case and let me address any thin areas along the, along the hairline. We do that without shaving. I know. Would you be doing that in that in this case? If it, it's dealer's choice. It I. I I suggest you do it, but uh, he looks. I think he looks good. He'll tell me before he takes his valley, if we do a second case. So, uh, and then his scar looks awesome. I mean, it's, we can't see it. So again, uh, we talk about scars a lot here. I've done uh, now four thousand and three facelifts. I think I sew pretty well. On average, every year we get mostly scars that are roughly that that wide. We get eighty year that are that skinny, which a true crew cut will cover. And on virgin heads, we get four a year that are that wide, which you have to have hair a half an inch long for the rest of your life. But those are pretty good odds. We don't, to my knowledge, have any big disaster scars, and we don't have, certainly don't have any on uh, first time around guys. Uh, maybe some repair cases we have to uh, get a little water scar. So, all you guys that are worried about scars, we've posted at least a thousand of them on the internet since uh, 2007. So, take a look. If you have questions or concerns and we can help you, please give Wendy a call. Anything you want to add, Wendy? No, I'm looking forward to seeing this guy for a second case. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot.